Welcome to the Anti-Fragile Mindset, where athletes and their support team come to learn the strategies champions use to achieve excellence. I'm your host, Christine Reese Velesne, and I'm a high-performance mindset coach, former professional athlete, figure skating coach, and a proud parent of an elite athlete. Each week, I'm sharing my top tips on how I develop unstoppable mindset in our up-and-coming young athletes and champions. So you can accomplish all your dreams, whether you're an athlete or a high-performing business professional. Get ready for a jam-packed episode focused on practical tips to help you get after your goals. Step out of your comfort zone, realize your dreams, and develop maximum enjoyment no matter what you do. So join me each week as we tackle important mindset issues to help you develop the anti-fragile mindset. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Anti-Fragile Mindset. We are in the Thrive Not to Survive series. I am so glad that you are joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed our last episode where we discussed the essential skill to master, focus awareness. Life is uncertain and difficult right now, and it's all the more essential that mindset tools are learned and nurtured before those important events and pressure situations come up, so that you as an elite athlete or high-performing professional have the necessary tools to support your strive for excellence, even during times of adversity and struggle. I'm your host, Christine reeves Belesne, master coach and high-performance trainer, former professional athlete, helping you become the best version of you. Our quote of the day is from Mary Lou Retton. Rather than focusing on the obstacle in your path, focus on the bridge over the obstacle. Our topic this week is Focus on performance mindset. So last week we discussed selective attention. And as we'll be detailing in this section to follow, focus on performance mindset works in much the same way. If we choose to focus on information necessary to the task at hand, the mind will trigger the body to perform or react the way it's trained to do. If we allow our focus to land on irrelevant and random thoughts or stimuli, our mind might miss the cues it needs to perform consistently. Our mind processes the information that we focus on. So the more we choose focus points that are relevant to our performance, the better and more consistent our performance outcomes will be. Our mind and body go through multiple stages between what grabs our attention and focus of an event and our ultimate outcome of the performance or results. So it's important to develop a focus on performance mindset that addresses each one of the stages. Focus, thoughts, emotions and feelings, body reactions, behaviors, and results producing your performance. The flow from the event through each stage and its impact on your overall performance is outlined in this Focus on Performance Mindset Cycle. Focus is the primary driver of our performance mindset. However, our minds can become easily distracted or hooked, caught on any number of things at any given time. These distractions often are the future what ifs, the past shouldas or shouldn't haves, that self talk that plays a role in our ability to maintain a proper focus or not. So, remembering the thoughts feeling outcome cycle, these factors may include remembering the past performances thinking of the outcome or the other competitors, how anxious or angry we feel, body sensations like sweating or being nervous, trembling, tightness, what you're physically doing, like your sports skill, or other information that our senses are bringing into our present moment awareness. Athletes often get caught on some piece of irrelevant information particularly during high-pressure and difficult situations. And those athletes who are able to focus or refocus on the needed information necessary increase their chances of performing successfully and achieving the results they want. So let's talk about selective attention and the thought filter. So each second, our brains are rapidly assessing thousands, hundreds of thousands of bits of information streaming through our stream of consciousness. 
while this can give us the impression that we can focus on multiple tasks simultaneously, we know that it isn't truly possible. As you've been listening to this podcast, your mind likely has not been focused on your left foot until now. And even though your foot has been sending signals to your brain this whole time, you likely haven't given your left foot much attention until now. At all times, information flows through your focus filter. It's the information that you choose in that present moment to focus on that matters most during executing a difficult skill and especially during competition. If you are focusing on non constructive, negative thoughts that could potentially hinder your performance, such as your opponent's skill level or soreness or negative criticism, then you cannot also be focusing on useful and helpful information that can enhance your performance. However, the opposite is also true. If you're holding your focus strongly on those positive thoughts and the necessary information to perform, you can't also be focusing on something negative or distracting. This is where being as intentional as possible plays a crucial role in performance. What you are choosing to focus on when you are performing will command and drive your focus filter to allow those negative thoughts to flow through and out while, wa- while locking on to those that are positive and necessary to your performance. It is so important to be able to focus on the task at hand when competing and performing, whether it be in competition or everyday training. Multiple studies have proven the importance of focus training to to performance outcomes. One such study had two groups of soccer players complete a fairly typical soccer drill. When the first group was asked to focus on what they wanted to do during the drill, for example, keep the ball close to the cones, the second group was asked to focus on what they did not want to do during the drill, like letting the ball stray away from the cones. Both groups completed the drill with their assigned focus, and the results were vastly different. The players that were focused on what they wanted to do, i.e. keep the ball close to the cones, were far more successful at completing the drill than those that were told not to let the ball stray away from the cones. So as we discussed in last week's episode, focus is one of the mindset variables that we can control. Athletes who focus on what they want to do, the positives, versus what they don't want to do, the negatives, have better performance and a decreased risk of making mistakes. So when it comes to your sport, you will perform to your best when you focus on the necessary information to perform your skills, just as you would eat a healthy diet and get proper rest to keep your body operating at a peak level. You'll want to make sure that you intentionally focus or refocus, when distracted, your attention on what is needed to be successful at your task in the moment. So selective attention is focused choice. The big issue with most athletes, even at the pro level, that they don't know what to focus on under pressure, on demand, and when fatigued. To help give a visual to how focus works, imagining, imagine your subconscious as a focus filter. So imagining your mind as this river, okay, your stream of consciousness, flowing through this large filter that's been placed in the middle of the river. And in this river, the human mind has a lot of different thoughts. And those thoughts range from very negative to very positive, from constructive to destructive thoughts. And we know that throughout the day, there is, a, there is scientific research to support that the average mind has from 50 to 70,000 thoughts that go through our minds in a day. That's a lot of different thoughts that pop into your filter in a day. So that when we look at the focus filter, we have a lot of different thoughts, some very positively charged and some very negatively charged. Some help us to perform and some hinder our performance. And some are just very neutral. And we have up to 70,000 of those thoughts coming to your mind in any given day. So one thing we do know about our focus filter 
is that we can only ever concentrate our focus on one thing at any given time. And so what many people mistake for being able to focus on multiple things at one time is multitasking. And so what multitasking really is, is the ability to shift focus quickly from one thing to another. It's not focusing on multiple things at the exact same time. We are never truly concentrating on more than one thing at one time. So let's take the example of driving a car and talking on the phone. We can do two things at the same time, but we can only really concentrate on one. So when you're driving and talking on the phone, you're literally shifting your focus back and forth from one to the other. So what happens when you're talking on the phone to someone and the lights pop up and suddenly yellow to red and your mind will go quickly from the conversation to the red light and you'll step on the brake? And if you pay attention at that time, most of the time you lose what you were about to say because your attention shifted so rapidly to the red light. So we can't truly focus on two things at the same time. And the reason that I bring this up and give this example is because if we know that as an athlete, it can help us tremendously. Because if I'm focused on thoughts that are destructive to my performance, then I guarantee you what's not flowing into this filter are constructive thoughts. So if I'm filling up this filter with doubt, fear, failure, future outcomes, then I'm not putting into it the things that are present moment, task-focused things that will enhance my performance right now. So we want to get really good at becoming aware of what we're putting into our focus filter. And this is where a lot of athletes come back to me and say, I can't believe I was putting so many negative things into my focus filter. For an example, I had a whole plan and strategy of how I was going to warm up and then skate my program. And when I began my program, I was thinking that I needed to land my first jump to make it to the top flight for the long program. And I held back and hesitated and missed the jump. I was focused on not missing the jump instead of on a deep knee bend and being aggressive on the takeoff. And so she started thinking about what could happen and not what she wanted to have happen or what could happen in a negative way instead of what she wanted to have happen in the positive. So what we want to get really good at is we want to know what we're putting into our focus filter. And if we know what's going on in there, we can do something about it. Most of the time, we have the opportunity to focus on either the positive or the negative in our river. But most humans start their day off kind of in the mid zone, neither positive nor negative. And they're okay initially, but the human mind will want to go first to the negative. So remember that negative bias that our normal brain and natural function has? And so it is natural that the first things that will pop into this filter are things that could happen to us that are harmful. Our minds are trying to prevent anything that could harm us. So it's naturally scanning both the external environment and our internal environment for anything that could possibly be going wrong or what's a threat. And so remember that external environment, that's all of those things that most of them we can't control. And the internal environment, our thoughts, our feelings, how our body's doing. So if our minds are constantly scanning the external environment and the internal environment, just naturally, The mind is going to find what's wrong. And for an athlete, that could be, wow, I'm really tired today, and I don't perform well when I'm tired. This isn't going to be a good day. Or, I'm really anxious right now. Oh, why am I feeling anxious? That's not good. Something's going to go wrong. So the mind will start to zero in on things that aren't right, that aren't helpful. And the reason it does that is it's trying to help us survive, to protect us. That's its job. And that worked really, really well in ancient times or when we were in dangerous situations or in a fight. But it doesn't work very well for peak, for peak performance or fine muscle movements that we see in many sports where we need to be precise in our skills and movements. 
So as we're looking at this, one thing that we want to help you be very aware of is what is popping into your filter. And what you'll naturally see is, huh, I'm putting into my filter a lot of things that are negative. Now, a lot of athletes recognize that they're thinking a lot of negative things or they're saying a lot of negative things to themselves, but they don't know how to get the negative thoughts out of their head. They don't know how to move the negative side down the river or release it and let it go. And one thing that I like to help my athletes understand when it comes to mindset is we can control what we focus on and we can control our behaviors, but our thoughts, our emotions, and our body reactions, they are the three that are very difficult to control. Some even say they're impossible to control. We can't necessarily control what pops into the river and then into our filter. So I, so I can't control if I have a thought about doubt or fear or failure. Yes, that is going to pop into your filter. You're a human being. And even the best of the best have thoughts about failure and fear and worry about making a mistake. This is where a lot of athletes think they should never feel a lack of confidence or that they're going to fail. And that it's natural. And great athletes have those thoughts. But what they don't do is they don't stay with that thought for very long. They very quickly let it pass through the filter and flow down the river. And then they quickly replace that thought with one that is much more productive and constructive to their performance. But how do they do that, you might ask? Well, here's a little tip. Number one, awareness. You have to be aware of what you're putting in to your filter and what you're not putting in. Number two, you have to accept that negative thoughts will come in. The greats recognize that they're going to have negative thoughts of doubt or fear, or I'm going to be thinking of the future. But what they don't do is spend a lot of time holding on to that thought. They quickly say, yep, thoughts are there. Let's get back to the task at hand. Let me get back to focusing on something that's far more helpful to my performance. And it's not a one size fit all. Every athlete needs to discover what focus key points work best for you. So you want to play around with what are your optimum key points of focus. And that, again, is where journaling and post-performance analysis is a must for high performers. What we tend to find among athletes reporting on poor performance is focus on the uncontrollables. These include the external sources, like the fans, the, 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 their perceptions of what their coaches are thinking and feeling, teammates, opponents, friends, parents, or internal influences like their feelings or emotions, nervousness or self-doubt or common feelings. Similarly, their focus tended toward past events, a missed element, a fall, any variety of mistakes or miscues, and future outcomes, the inevitable loss of a competition, or personal esteem, a missed opportunity for a scholarship or future invite to an international competition. There's so many. When it comes to controllables like behavior, we predictably see performance inhibiting results during these situations. The head hanging, the negative self-talk, angry behaviors. On the other side of the scale, Athletes reporting on peak performance tend to report a focus on the task and the present moment. When asked to recall what they were thinking, many actually have difficulty or even report that they weren't really thinking at all. Now, this, of course, we know isn't true. We're always thinking. But what it tells us is that their thoughts were likely simpler and useful and in a state of sync and flow with their body. Unlike the sort of frenzied and colliding rush of thoughts we have when we're worried and anxious and fearful. It also tells us that their thoughts were in the background. Their thoughts were positioned behind the task, not in front of it. 
The same is true of their feelings or emotions. Athletes performing optimally aren't feeling any fewer emotions than those who are performing poorly. They're just not hyperly focused on them. So if how they feel is irrelevant to the task, it's removed from their focus filter. Controllable behaviors during peak performances are overwhelmingly performance enhancing. You can see that good posture, the chin up, shoulders back, tall spine power poses. You know, that intentional behavior, controlled breathing, confident facial expressions. But as every athlete is unique, what we encourage you to do is to isolate your focus points in your peak performance post-competition analysis that are controllable. These are likely present moment focus, focuses related to the task and focus related to your actions and behaviors. And to practice bringing these focus points into your performance with intention. These are your personal performance boosters. They won't bring about a peak performance at every turn, but they can be used to stabilize and direct your focus during times of distraction or difficulty and maintain your readiness during times of calm. Begin slowly adding these into your routines before or during practice. You can even practice visualizing and imagining these focus points at home and then slowly working them into your training and then smaller, say, simulations or maybe even small competitions and performances. If you'd like help to broaden and develop your focus and your performance skills, you can find information on our online training programs at the Mental Toughness Institute. So to wrap up, with 50 to 70,000 thoughts streaming through our consciousness, there are a lot of negative past and future thoughts that can distract our minds away from the present and the task we want to be focused on in the moment. Acknowledging that negative thoughts are flowing in our river and will flow into our filter and that we can dismiss them and let them flow out is a powerful concept and skill, as is the choice to be able to refocus our attention back to the present moment and on the things that will be useful and helpful in getting the job done. So awesome job and way to go on finishing another episode on the anti-fragile mindset. I hope that you were able to take away from today's episode something that will help you to build razor sharp focus to decide what you do and do not want to focus on. My affirmation power phrase for today is... I focus on what I can control and let go of what I can't. If you'd like to learn more about how to develop that focus, unshakable confidence, and become the anti-fragile athlete, contact me at christine at anti-fragileathlete.net. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this episode to help us rise up on the searches so more athletes and high performers can benefit from this information. Follow me on social media and don't forget to check out the online learning center at the mental toughness institute.net. Tune into my next episode as we discuss creating peak performance and join the conversations in the exclusive skate happy Facebook group and on Instagram skating mind gym. See you on the next episode. Remember breathe and get your mental toughness reps in.